Good morning, everybody. <laughs> My famous statement, good morning. <laughs> Why is it a good morning? Because this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we want to thank you for everybody watching online, and we want to thank you for everybody who is in here today. But before um, I get to the teaching, we are going to lift up our hands in praise and worship and just usher in what God has in store for us today. So Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Heavenly Father, that this is the day that you have made, and we will be joyous and glad in it. And Heavenly Father, we just want to praise and thank you that we are living under the open heaven. And as we are living under the open heaven, Heavenly Father, and the portals that you have opened unto us, we just want to praise and thank you for the miracles and for the signs and for the wonders. We want to thank you, Father God, for the Holy Ghost and fire. We want to thank you for your glory to rain down on in this place, Father God, but also to rain down on each and every person that is watching, Father God, no matter what country they are in, no matter what state they are in, Heavenly Father, in the United States of America. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are the same yesterday and day and forever. And as you saved nations before in the past, you are saving our nation. Father God. And we want to praise you. We want to thank you that we are believing, Father God, that your hand is swiftly moving across this nation, moving to deliver, moving to save, moving to heal, moving to make whole. And we take, Father God, we believe that you are the great I am. We believe, Father God, that you are ushering in the greatest harvest of souls. And we thank you, Father God, that we are your remnant, that are able to see, and we are partakers of this great exodus. Father God, we thank you that you are moving to place judgment on one party, to place blessing on the other. And we thank you, Father God, that we are the ones who are seeing the greatest acts of our Heavenly Father that the world has ever seen. And this is your time, Father God. This is your Heavenly Father, your show. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, this day that your words that you once said for this very day and this very hour will be spoken, Heavenly Father. That your will is done in this room, Father God. Your will is done on this earth, Father God. And we want to thank and praise you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against this service shall prosper. No weapon formed against this revelation knowledge shall prosper. And we thank you, Father God, that blinders are being removed and hearts are softened this day to only, not only to obey you, Father God, because this is a day to choose obedience because you have set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. And Heavenly Father, we know that we have a choice to make. And we choose you, Father God, and we choose to believe you. We honor you. We thank you for the name of Jesus. We thank you for his blood. We thank you for the authority, and we thank you for the revelation that you are pouring out this day. And how powerful we are because the greater one lives on the inside of us. We thank you for all the prophetic words you have been pouring out all throughout this world that is giving people encouragement and giving people hope. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, I have another word to give to you this morning. And it is called Let Freedom Ring. And be looking forward to the next couple of days. I will be giving out uh, a few more um, now, the one I'll be giving you out today, I received on the 9th of December. So I am ahead of time of receiving them before I give them out to you. Because so we can edit them and, and we can get them out uh, to you in a proper time um, when you guys are requesting the prophetic words. So, and God knows that. And these are specific times. So even though I hear them a couple of days in advance, God is releasing me to give them on certain days because that's the day that he wants them to be released, not the days that I want them. For the next couple of days, be looking forward to it because tomorrow's, it's called the day of vengeance. And so he's releasing all of these words to give to you. And you guys have probably heard me say this many times, but he's releasing these words to give you guys, to give you hope, to give you encouragement. But he's also letting you in on some puzzle pieces of what is about to come to pass. And we've talked about various locations in this country. We've talked about many different people. And he's going more in depth on the people, what they have done, what their part was. This is only a drop in the bucket to what we're actually going to see here in the next coming weeks, the next coming months. So in the next couple of weeks and the next coming months, be prepared. I heard on the way over here to brace yourself for impact. Now, when I hear brace yourself for impact, that does not mean 
that you're going to you know, brace yourself for impact because something horrible is going to happen to your house or something horrible is going to happen to you. No, he's saying brace for impact because the truth he's been talking about is going to come at them at the perfect storm that the word he gave to me the other day. It's a spiritual storm that is hitting our adversaries with the force of tornadoes, with the force of avalanches, with the force of hurricanes, with the force of earthquakes. And it's all happening and piling down all at one time. And even though you may not be able to see it in the natural yet, but you have seen a landslide starting to start. You've seen it starting to flow. You've seen truths all are starting to, come, starting to come out. And you've seen the news network that he keeps mentioning over and over and over again. Look what's happening to him in the last week and a half. Now that's just the beginning. And the reason why I'm saying that, because that's prophecy being fulfilled. These are not my words. These are words spoken to me by the Holy One of Israel, by our God, our great I Am, the Most High God, the Creator of Heaven and Earth. He's pouring out more prophetic words on this earth because he needs these words spoken, but he also needs us to take them. He needs us to receive them. He needs us to say them. He needs us to start declaring and decreeing. He's been giving us marching orders. What are those marching orders? I will not give up and I will not quit and rise up, rise up, awaken. He's been talking about the church needs to awaken and to arise. Why? Because we are coming into a place where God is saying there has to be a choice that's made whether you are going to believe me or you are going to believe the news outlets or you are going to believe fear. And that time is coming in the next few weeks. There's draw, he's been drawing a line in the sand. Amen. And if we are not in the perfect will of God, and we are not in doing what we're supposed to be doing, and if we are still walking how we want, if we are still acting the way we want to act, if we're still living in accordance to what we feel and what we want to do, he's saying, get right before me and get right before me now. Not the fact that you are going to be part of this judgment, but you will not see the promised land as he wants you to. And that promised land, we've already talked about several times, that promised land is a way of life. It's a way that he wants you to live. What you see now, and he's giving me these words in the next couple of days, you will hear this. What you think is normal is not the normal he wanted for you. Everybody wants to go back. Well, I want to go back to normal. I want to go back before 2020. Why? You're living under a system and under an enslavement that God never intended you to ever experience, nor did he ever want you to ever be a part of that situation and that system. And he's saying by yesterday's word, by one move of my finger, I can tear every one of these systems down. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He even mentioned, um, I know we have somebody here who's been from Hollywood, and uh, he, he knows what goes on in there. Well, I have another word that he gave to me this morning, and yes, or yesterday morning and this morning, but it goes more in depth about what's going on there and what he's going to do. And we need to be prepared because they have influenced the world. Now, didn't you say that I confirmed stuff that was going on there that I could have not known? And I know that when he was here, that was confirmation not only for me, that's confirmation to you. Because I don't know what's going on there unless God tells me. I don't know what's going on around the world until the Lord tells me. I don't know what's going behind all these the secret places of behind these people's doors until God shows me. And he's getting a very, very detailed on what he's doing to each person. We talked about the last time that I was here and I was preaching. We talked about the angel of death. Yes, it's coming. But that's not for you and I. An angel of death, and what we mean by that is you're going to see mass deaths in this earth. And I've heard, when I've heard that, and when the Lord gave it to me, because he's been talking about the Exodus a lot. And again, those who know me, you've been hearing me talk about it for years. But one of the things that he was talking about, and the reason why he's been saying that, is because this is the last act before our complete freedom. But there will be people piling up in the street. And the reason why I'm saying that to you is not to scare you, and it's not to overwhelm you, and it's not to, you know, what layman's terms now is to freak you out. 
This is judgment that's coming. We are not supposed to gloat. We're not supposed to. We saw, I saw it on our text, yes, our thread yesterday of our prayer team. We're not supposed to gloat when these things happen. We're not supposed to gloat over people's deaths. When I heard this, when I heard this first prophetic word about the angel of death coming, I was bawling when he gave that to me because he was bawling. I could feel the compassion of the Lord just come over me so strong. He said, I waited. People keep asking why. Why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Why is it taking so long, God? I don't understand. He's been taking so long because the world needed to wake up. He's been taking so long because his church, first and foremost, needed to wake up. There are people in this, in this world and in his body that still do not believe that God is going to do something, that God's going to move, that everything that we've seen over the last year and a half is going to overturn. The economy is going to change. The world as we know it will change. It's going to change for the better. And people say, well, what about tribulation period? Well, what about tribulation period? It ain't for, it ain't for us right now. God said in Acts chapter 3, he said, before Jesus returns, before the rapture, there has to be complete restoration. I'm going to give you two other scriptures. That's Acts 3 and 21. Complete restoration, that's amplified version. Complete restoration of all things. God is not coming back for a church that's wimpy. He's not coming back for a church that's sick. He's not coming back for a church that doesn't know their authority. He's not coming back for a church that doesn't know who they are in Christ Jesus. They're not going to come back for a church that when they lay hands on the sick, they, they won't recover. No, this is the reason why he's talking about fresh fire flood, that the word he gave me the other day, because he's, it's this refining fire. He's destroying what Satan has done to you on the inside of you, to your spirits, to your souls, to your bodies, to your finances, to your families. He's destroying all that. God is wiping away any, any evidence that your adversary was ever there. So how is that possible? Look in the Bible. When the children of Israel left Exodus, he said no feeble was among them. He got them up in their spirit. He got them up in their soul. He healed them in their bodies. When they went out, they did not go out broken. They didn't go out sick. They didn't go out weary, and they didn't go out saying, you know, woe is me. They went out in celebration. They were blowing their shofars, and one of these days I just got to just bring my shofar. Because it's that sound, and I know my kids probably think, well, Mom, stop blowing that. And I don't blow it well all the time when they're around because my dog, who's six pounds, does not like it, and she goes and runs, <laughs> and she hides from me. So when they're at work, or Chris is at work, and my other two are at work, and Caden's at school, and I just sit there, and I'll anoint my house, and I'll just blow my shofar. My neighbors probably think, what is that crazy woman doing in that household? <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm wiping out any evidence that my adversary was ever there. No matter if it's over me, if it's over my husband, it's over my kids, over my dog, over our finances, over our household. I'm drawing a line. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. I'm doing all these things that God told us to do. And before the children of Israel left, he gave them something to do. He's giving us something to do. He's telling us to get up right now. He's telling us to focus on him. And even though there's storms out there, which we're going to pray for all those people affected by the tornadoes, He also gave me just yesterday morning. Now, there are some times I'm not listening to the prophets like I want to. I used to listen to them every day. As soon as they would, like they had something out, turn it on right away and I listened to it. I'm not allowed to do that. Because now after I hear a word, I go back and to listen to that word and then I have a confirmation of the word I just heard. So I'm only allowed, I'm instructed to only listen to them when he lets me listen to them. And one of the things he gave me yesterday was about waves crashing into the shores like never before. And he was talking about, and again, I'll give this to you tomorrow or Tuesday, tomorrow, Tuesday. I'll let you guys know which one it is. But when I give this word to you, he's going to show you, he's talking about weather patterns are going to change. 
But this, wa this water crashing into the shore, and it was like he said, something like it was never done before. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is because I just heard Timothy Dixon. I only got to say like 10, 15 minutes of it, and the Lord told me I had to stop, and I couldn't listen to the rest of it. But he was talking about waves. He's talking about the water. He's talking about crashing on the seashore. And I was like, Lord, that's what you gave me. But that's the reason why I can't listen to certain people at certain times. I got to wait. Why? He's and there was somebody who said one day that uh, you're plagiarizing. No. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that should give you confirmation. Right. Praise the Lord. That gives you, not only it should give you confirmation because what God is saying through all these different prophets, it may not be the exact same word, but it means the same thing. And when you hear multiple people saying the same things, you should get excited because, oh my gosh, and this is what we do. Like after we pray and stuff on our prayer team, we got our prayer call, and after we get our job done, and we just sit there and we have, you know, conversations a little bit, and we get excited. Well, this is, this is what Hank said. This is what Timothy said. This is what Kent said. This is what uh, Robin said. And then we start going on about it, and we get all excited about it. Why? Because God's putting all these pieces to a puzzle, and we get to see this puzzle come to pass and have all these pieces come together at one time. He said, we've been handpicked. We've been part of this church that no... Eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard what God's about to do. Say, Julie, say a lot. Because God is trying to emphasize to you what He's about to do. No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard. Even when you go back to the book of Exodus and you see how awesome those works were, He's going to do better than that. And He picked you and I. Why do you think your adversary has put so. I have seen so many people under more oppression than they've ever been in their life. I've seen so much more fear. I've seen so much more sickness and disease. I have so much more, more mental depression and heaviness and all this confusion and frustration and all these kind of things. I've seen it more now than any other time in history, even last Wednesday. I felt something so horrible and so strong on me. And then I talked to all these other people and they said the exact same thing. Your adversary is in an all-out onslaught war against you and I, and that's the reason why God is saying, get up, get into my word, start speaking what I need you to speak, start saying what I need you to say, because when your adversary comes roaring like a lion, because he ain't one, you have the lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside of you. When, you're like, when your adversary comes, he's like one, he ain't one, he ain't got any teeth, and all he's got is a bunch of smoke and mirrors, and if you don't believe him, and if you don't receive his reports, and you start speaking the opposite of what your adversary wants you to speak, you will have the victory and he will lose. Amen. But he'll come in, and he'll get you to slip up and say something so he can open and usher that door in, and so he can just walk right in and do what he wants to do. That's what fear is. That's why if you've got any fear in your life, get it out. If you have any strife in your life, I'm telling you, get it out. If you have any anger, because remember it says in God's word in Mark, chapter 11 and verse 25 and 26, it says, you need to what? Forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. If, and it says in Mark 11, 23, or 24 and 25, if we say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, you shall not doubt in your heart. You should have whatever what you say. You can't have whatever you say and have that mountain move if you got this big mountain over here of anger and bitterness and rage and unforgiveness over here. If you got that in your life, you got your adversary in your life because strife is where every other evil thing is. Kick it out and get it out. God's ushering in. Now I'll, I'll read this word and I'll get to some scriptures. All right. Let freedom ring is what this one's called. So it says, shout, let freedom ring once again. For I, the Lord, this day am knocking your enemies down out of their places of power. Many have already been removed and the new ha news hasn't announced it yet. Some have already fallen on their face like Facebook and I am moving against... Now, I'll explain that Facebook thing to you in a minute. 
And I'm moving against all those businesses that were against you. Amazon going down wasn't by them. It was another sign of darkness in the enemy's camps. You will see and hear more about outages as the days grow closer to your exodus. I am tearing down the walls, their gates, their plans, and anything that they had that they thought they were safe behind. Their firewalls, in their servers and laptops. They had to protect their businesses and their secrets, they thought. They could hide it in plain sight. Those firewalls have been breached by me, and I am pouring out all this information that was hidden from you to enslave you with mandates, lockdowns, plan shortages, and the truth is coming out like a freight train barreling down the tracks. Yes, the momentum has been picking up speed with no way to stop or slow it down. For I, the Lord, am in control of every system in this earth. With one move of my finger, they will all fall. And not just in fall. Watch the next few months will bring great celebrations this new year of 2022, which is bringing the great reset of the new. New economies, new governments, new jobs. New churches, new businesses, new authority. Fresh fire and glory shall um, hold on. It's fresh fire and glory. And he says, hold on because you are because you should enjoy your receiving ride. It has begun. So your receiving ride has begun. For I, the Lord, am moving now to deliver those who are still refusing to believe. Now, there's people still refusing to believe that he's about to deliver, so watch what he's saying. Get right before me. The clock is running out for the choice that needs to be made in the, which side that you are on to receive all what I'm about to pour out. Some will receive 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. But not everyone will receive the same portion depending on what you believe. I want all my children to receive all that has your names on it, your entire inheritance package. In my word, not everyone saw the promised land. And that is happening once again. I have waited for my children to awaken and get right before me. My grace and love for you is why I waited this long. So many of my children have asked, why, Lord, are you taking so long? One, I do not move by man's timing. Two, I was waiting for you to arise in your authority. This is a time of a great falling away and separation in the body of Christ. And in this time, my remnant will come out and rise higher, brighter, and become who I need them to be in this hour. For the world to know my body is the ones who are the true, who are true to my word. And nothing, well, this, this is who the remnant is who are true to his word, and nothing this earth threw at them stopped them from pursuing and standing through it all. They fought until I, the Lord, am stepping in. They have the determination in the fight in them like of Paul. And Jesus' resurrection power is rising in you now bringing you up above all which has kept you down. No more hiding no more hiding on holding your heads down. No more enslavement and fear. Come up higher, my children. Now is your time to come up higher than the evil ones ever thought they could be. A power none of them could ever have. Freedom, say it. My freedom is here. And now, no more waiting. Say it every day. My freedom is here. Say it loud. My freedom is here. My freedom is here. My freedom is here. My freedom is here. To stay. 
Let freedom ring in my life and in my nation. And you will not be defeated and you will not quit. These are your marching orders today, my children, as I bring all your enemies down. Now listen to what he's saying. Explosions will be seen and heard in the coming days. For my angel armies and your military have been at work to save and deliver you from this tyranny and from the pharaohs of this day. For this is drawing closer of their judgment and for the death to the ones against you. It is far greater in number than you ever thought that it could be. When I move against D.C. and against the elites and against the globalists and against the businesses and the foreign nations that were involved in your destruction, their destruction will be great. Peace I will bring you in the midst of this calamity and joy and strength you shall receive. For you are protected by me saith the Lord of hosts. Now, he had all that capitalized. That we are protected by him. Transfers, removals, turnarounds, miracles, healings, and signs and wonders will rain down from heaven and bring you into a promised land and a new life where there is no lack of any kind. This is your future, and your future and your new is here, and it's here to stay, saith the Lord. Now, when he's talking about, and I think it was Robin Bullock that talked about this, how Facebook fell on their face, how they were out for so many hours. Well, they never fully recovered from that. Now, all of a sudden, they have a new name, Meta, which in Hebrew means death. So they're proclaiming their own death. It's not even a joke. They don't know what it means, but Meta means death. And the owners transferred their name right after their blackout. Why is it so important? Because of what he said in that word about what's going on with them and what's going on with the Amazon servers. People thought they just had a fluke thing that happened and they were down for so many hours. No. God caused those blackouts. He said he breached their firewalls. Because there's things on those servers that people have a right to know. And if you've noticed, all of a sudden, Facebook is now advertising more than they ever have before in any of their platforms. A company that's supposed to be worth lots of money. Why all of a sudden, after this blackout, they change their name and they have to advertise all the time. Things are happening in plain sight. But because some people in the body of Christ, it doesn't happen the way they thought, they just foo foo it away. There's one person said in a comment, nothing's happening. What? Really? And I want to pray for these people. What do you mean nothing's happening? Even Timothy Dixon prophesied the Mississippi River was going to run backwards, and it did. We live by the Mississippi River. We know how big that river is. It almost completely cuts the United States in half. And it was flowing backwards for a time. When a hurricane came in to the Gulf, it switched the current. Now that can only be done by the hand of God. He's been talking about earthquakes. He's been talking about volcanoes. Well, all of a sudden, are you seeing an uptick in earthquakes and uptick in volcanoes? But people are just fooding away. And also, you have to understand, there's also people that are suppressing this information of how much is going on, especially in Yellowstone. That will be another word that he gave me this morning. Pay attention to that. Yellowstone is the biggest supervolcano in this world. It's like a thousand miles wide or something. And the reason why the supervolcano is so massive and so important to watch is because of this, this magma chamber of this supervolcano is bigger than you can even possibly fathom. You see a mountain and you see a volcano and you can see where the hole is and you can see, you know, it's, you know, it's not that big compared to how many states wide. This thing is underneath the earth. So the magma chamber is bigger. 
And I was just talking to somebody on the phone yesterday about the buffalo scattering from there. Now, again, that was something that I didn't get to hear all of. One, because when they were in an airport, I heard only every other word, so I couldn't hear what they were saying. But I've had prophetic words. I spoke them here. You guys heard them about Yellowstone. And it's not going to fully erupt. If it would fully erupt, it would put us in an ice age. Because the ash cloud that would go so many miles wide and go so far, it would put everybody in the ice age. It would destroy soil. It would destroy the way we would be able to um, have any food whatsoever. It would destroy so many things. So it's not going to erupt fully. But it will erupt where you are going to notice it. So be watching for it. This is just another sign of what God is showing that he's about to do. And the reason why you're seeing some of these things is because God is, because there's so many people that I don't believe. He's long-suffering and he's merciful. And what happened even in this last couple of days, what happened with all those breakouts of tornadoes? When do we have tornadoes like this in, in the month of December? It was widespread. He said a long time ago, watch. I think it was even uh, Timothy Dixon uh, prophesied that as well. He said in certain states were going to happen, and it did. No, nobody was watching for that in December. I don't watch, because usually, okay, we're in the Midwest, for those who are watching online. We're in the Midwest of the, of the country, and usually our tornado uh, time that we had to watch for is like between May and July, or April and July, somewhere in there. We, we can see tornadoes. For the month of December, not like that. God is already starting to show and starting to awaken people up that things aren't normal. Things aren't as we remembered. I remembered as a kid. Certain season, when they started, and how cold certain things were. And all of a sudden, it's just, when I've grown up in the last couple of years, things have just gotten crazy with seasons. Seasons are not the same as they used to be. Fall just seems to, you know, go longer than it used to. And then all of a sudden, in, in going into April, we're still getting snow at times. We might show, I, I remember it used to being really nice in spring, and it, you know, April and March and April, you used to get excited about it. So the things that are changing, and God is saying there's a reason why things that are changing, is because things are not going to be the way they were. He said, in that word he gave me a long time ago, everything that what can be shaken will be shaken. He's shaking the body of Christ. You are going to hear of more churches. You're going to hear of more ministers. This is not just going to affect the evil ones. This is going to affect his body. Because there are people that are in, in behind pulpits that are uh, not supposed to be there. They're in behind pulpits that are not obeying. They're doing it for their own financial gain. And you'll see them. But again, we're supposed to pray. We're not supposed to be ones who are, you know, go don't gossip about it. And I will tell you, and I warn people, do not talk about the prophets. Do not talk about. Because you can see people get nasty. Don't do that, because all you're doing is playing into the devil's hand. And curses come upon you when you speak against the children of Almighty God, especially the ones who are called. Right. They're talking about big-time ministers, and I'm like, you don't do that. Don't do it. We pray for them. You don't, you don't mock them. And there's been too many being mocked. And too many children, of, uh, there are too many of God's people that are getting in offense and they're walking out of love, and they're, they're, they're bashing this person and bashing that person, and they're wondering why all these things are happening in their life. You can't do it. We have to come up higher than we were before. Now I want to get to a couple of scriptures before I get to praying. This is something, okay, so I want, I want you guys to turn to Acts 3, and instead of just me quoting it, I want to read it for you. Oops. Acts chapter 3, I'm going to start with verse 19, and I'm going to jump down to verse 21. Now, there's three verses that I'm going to give to you that's talking about this complete restoration, and it's talking about, because people say, well, do you keep talking about a great exodus? Well, where is it at in the Bible? 
It doesn't say great access, just like it doesn't say, quote, the rapture as in the Bible. It says the great catching away, but it doesn't say the rapture. So don't get caught up on certain words. Okay. Acts 3 and 19. This is the amplified version for all who are wondering. So repent, change your mind and purpose, and turn around and return to God, and that your sins may be erased and blotted out, wiped clean. The times of refreshing and recovering from the effects of the heat and reviving with fresh fire, we're talking about fresh fire lately, may come from the presence of the Lord. So how do you receive this fresh refining fire that God wants you to have and receive to wipe away, to blot out the presence of the Lord? Get into the presence of the Lord. Jump down to verse 21. Whom heaven, not talking about oh, verse 20, I'm going to read verse 20 first. And he may send to you Christ the Messiah who before was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus. Verse 21. Whom heaven must receive and retain until the time of the complete restoration of all that God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets for ages past from the most ancient time in the memory of man. So people are talking about, no, the rapture is going to happen tomorrow. No, the rapture is not going to happen tomorrow. I used to be one of those people, Jesus, get me out of here. Because think about how selfish that is. Jesus, get me out of here. There's 7 billion other people on this planet that need Jesus. Or in this world, I don't know how many millions of Christians there are. But you think how many billions of people need to know the Lord. But what he keeps saying these prophetic words that he's given. He said, I'm going to show the world who I really am. Not who man's tradition, not what man's doctrines, not my, what all these certain uh, denominations are telling you who God is. Not your enemies who they're telling you that God is. Not your governments that are telling you who God is. He's going to say, no, I'm going to demonstrate who I am. And I'm going to show the world who I really am and who's, side, and who's on my side. In the book of Exodus, you can read it at least two or three times. He says in the book of Exodus, I'm going to greatly distinguish my people from you. He's doing that again. He's greatly distinguishing his people because when his hand moves across this, or now first, it's going to move across the United States of America. And then once he moves across the United States of America, then it's going to disperse throughout all the other countries. But he's got to save the United States first. And there's a reason for that. But as he does this, he needs his children to be in a set place of where he needs them to be. He needs you to know who you are in Christ Jesus. He does not need you to sit there every day and take everything your adversary is doing to you. If you have a bad report, what do you need to do? You need to stand up and say, no, I believe the word of God. I, like Paul, what do you say in that word? You're going to fight like Paul. And then Paul. Shipwrecks, stoning, and all these other horrible things that happened to Paul. And then he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 16, for these light afflictions. He knew. He knew something. And Jesus is saying, and our Heavenly Father is saying, you know what Paul knew. He said, I will not be moved by what I see. I will not be moved by what I hear, but I'm, what? I'm only moved by the word of God. How many Christians can say that for this very day and this very hour right now with what we've been seeing over the last two years and especially all the crap we've been seeing for this last year? And how many people can say I'm not moved by what I see? Because it's easy to move by what you see. Well, they're telling me I'm going to lose my job. Says who? Who gave the authority to do that? You have the right to say, Father God, I am your child. I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. What it says in John 17, 13 through 17, I'm in this world, I'm not of it. I'm not subject to the regulations of this world. Jesus said, don't take them out. But what? 
Protect them from the evil ones. What's he doing? These mandates are being overturned. There are people that have stood and stood and stood and stood through it all, and they still have their jobs. And if you have lost your job, you can sit there and ask God where he wants you because he's got some better plan for you. And also you can demand a sevenfold return of what has been stolen from you because when the thief has been caught, he's got to give it back. You know that God did not do that to you. Your adversary has been doing that to you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. They don't have the power to take your jobs away from you, and they don't have the problems to take your freedoms from you. That's right. More people in this country and around the world need to start saying, there is no man that can stand before me all the days of my life so God was with Moses, so he will be with me. That it's in Joshua 1. I'll turn it. I don't want you guys, I want to quote it. Joshua 1, in chapter 1 and 5. I'm going to read, though. Hold on. Joshua 1, 3. I'm going to read Joshua 1, 3. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread that I have given to you. As I have promised Moses, okay, verse 4, from the wilderness and Lebanon to the great river Euphrates to the land of the Hittites and Canaan to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west and shall be your territory. Now look at this verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Amen. If there is men standing before you, you get up and say, no man can stand before me. God was with Moses. He was with all the children of Israel in the land of Egypt, and he is with me just the same, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and I will not be moved by what I see. I will not be moved by what I hear. I am a child of God. I am in this world, but I am not of it. I will not be moved in Jesus' name. Satan, you ain't going to move me off my place. You ain't going to take and I'm, I know I'm not speaking good English. <laughs> when you get sassy with your adversary, you don't, it doesn't matter about good English or not. But you ain't or you're not going to take my inheritance package from me. You're not going to keep stealing my health from me. You're not going to steal my sound mind that Christ has already given to me. You're not going to steal my finances from me because Jehovah Jireh is my provider. One of the things, if you guys have not seen James and Julie in the morning, go watch it. Because one thing that James said that really struck out to me, that, I, that it, even hit, it even hit my uh, closest friend that we went to school together. And we were, he, I brought him over to our house, him and his wife, and they're one of their ch children. And uh, we were just sitting there around the table. We were having dessert at the time. And he said, you know James on your show? And I said, yeah. And he said, he said something about fencing. That really struck my heart. And I said, yeah. He said, we're not supposed to be fencing with that little tiny little sword. We're supposed to get out the big sword, and we're supposed to start warring in the spirit. Amen. Start getting aggressive. And one of the things he always says, mount up. So what, what does that mean? We have to get up. If you've fallen down, Micah chapter 7, verse 8, for when I fall, I shall what? Arise. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemies, for when I fall, I shall arise. If you fall and get up, take that sword, which is the word of God, and you start swinging it at your adversary when he keeps trying to shove it into you that you are seriously facing all these impossible situations and you're in this dark hole that you're never going to get out of. Well, Joseph went to the pit in the palace in one day. So if God brought Joseph out of a pit in one day and brought him into the second in command, why could he not do the same thing for you? He's no respecter of persons. Okay, Joel. Joel chapter 2, and the reason why I want to get to this one. Joel chapter 2, now look, look at this in verse 23. This is another verse I want to talk to you about the restoration of all things. Then we're going to go to Haggai, and then I'll probably close with that. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he gives you the former 
or the early rain in just measure. And in righteousness, he causes to come down for you the rain. Look, the former rain and the latter rain as before. Listen to this. Verse 24. And the threshing floors shall be full of grain, and the vast shall overflow with juice of the grape and oil. Verse 25, this is what I want you guys to see. And I will restore or replace for the years that the locust has eaten, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the crawling locust, my great army was sent among you. So your adversary has been stealing, he's been cheating, he's been killing, and God says all the years he's going to restore what the canker worm has stolen and what the locust has stolen from you. He's going to restore all that's been stolen. And I think, I think it was just uh, Robin Bullock said the other day. I don't know if it was on Sunday or if it was on his uh, 11th hour. But he said, where you were at in 2019, God's going to bring you up double or triple than, than that. I can't remember exactly what it was. I'll have to go back. And I've, I've seen that one so many times. I, I should know this by heart now. But there is a transfer of wealth, a transfer of businesses, a transfer of all these things that the enemy has taken from you. Because why? Because the children that God has given the, oh, the earth over to the children of men. His children. Remember, Jesus is what? He has the whole entire earth. Everything's been given to Jesus, and we're what? Joint heirs with who? Jesus. So we've had so many things that have been stolen from us We've been put it in this slave mentality that I gotta work, and if I don't work, I am broke. Our jobs should be seeds that we sow. It should be more than enough. It should be the overflow. Jesus has already said in his word. God has said in his word that he's Jehovah, what? Jireh. What is Jehovah Jireh? Our provider. Hasn't he seen so many times in this book that he's provided over and over? He even provided an axe head that fell into the water that somebody borrowed, and he had the axe head float up. Another example, with taxes. When Jesus and his servants, or when his disciples, when they needed tax money, what did he go tell them to do? Go to the fish. Go open up the first fish's mouth and open it up. How many of us have gone to the ocean or gone to the Gulf of Mexico or gone to the Mississippi River and said, you know what, I'm going to catch a fish, I'm going to open it up, and there's going to be some money in there? I've actually heard some, I think it was uh, um, Jeremy Pearson, so it was Kenneth Copeland's grandson. It was many years ago, and I was listening to him. One of the things that he said, they needed money. And they were driving a car down this, I don't know if it was two-lane road, and Money flew be like across the windshield and it got stuck on the fence. Was it Jerry Savell? Okay. Stuck, stuck on a, money got stuck on a fence. There's also when I know Jerry Savell needed tires for his car, he said because it, you could see the air out of it because it, they were so bald. And he had no money and they were going somewhere to preach. And all of a sudden, not kidding you, a fire, they were trying to get on the freeway, and he had really bad transmission, so he had to wait until the semi passed. What well, was a Firestone truck? And it passed by him, they tried to get up to speed, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, two tires start coming down the freeway, right in front of their, and stopped right in front of the car, and went off into the ditch. And it just happened when he pulled over and he picked up these tires. They were the exact same size tires that he needed. That is only God. And I can, I can go into story after story with Jerry. And the, the guy named Oop, I'll tell you that one of these times. God does so many things you could even dream of doing. Dream of asking him how to provide. Don't put him in a box. God will provide. This is another way. Okay. Haggai. Go to Haggai. I'm not, this is the last scripture I'm going to do. Go Haggai chapter uh, 2, please. Haggai chapter 2. Oops. In 
And I'm going to start with verse 6. Now, look at, look at this. This is, a, this is really important for right now. Because you have all this stuff that's going on right now in this world. And you have all these nations. And I know people are afraid of these nations. But listen to this. Haggai chapter 2, verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while, I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Verse 7. I will shake the nations and the desires and the precious things of all nations shall come in and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 8. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And verse 9. The latter glory of this house with its successor to which Jesus came, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. The gold and the silver is whose? God's. The earth is whose? God's. You have men that are out there right now that are thinking, I'm not even kidding you. They think they're God's. They're controlling the world like they are gods. The word I'm going to give you tomorrow, it even says, they're nowadays pharaohs. It's the same demonic thing with a different name. <clears throat> so what have we learned from today? God is able. God will God is moving. Brace yourself for impact. Amen. Brace yourself for impact of that glory and that refining fire. Brace yourself for impact for that wealth transfer. You brace yourself for impact for the goodnesses of God because once you see, now watch, he said the remnant is going to know when all the blackouts start occurring and all these things happen to our adversaries and it looks like chaos and it looks like all this stress is going on in the world. God's saying my remnant's going to know I am moving and their freedom is here. Amen. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Choose faith over fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know that I do, I, I, I want to pray. I know we have to well, I'm going to pray quick, quick. Then we'll do communion. Um, there's a lot of people that were affected by these tornadoes. And this coming of what destruction is going to happen and the death toll that you're about to see. The Lord is saying that... Um, we need to start praying for people. So before this comes, that they're on the right side of it. We can intercede. You have the power to save somebody's life. Why do you think God needs you free? So instead of you always focusing just in this narrow mind of my life, my body, my finances or my children, whatever it is, he needs you focused on the world. He wants us to go out through all the world. He's given us that ability to do it. So we have to save with our, word, with our words. We pray, we stand, we confess. What well, We are his mouthpiece in this world. We are vessels of almighty God. We got to say, God, what do you want me to say today? Who do you want me to pray for today, God? What do you want me to do for you? Because it's all about you, Father. It's not about me. We should get up every day with the love of Christ on the inside of us, just wanting to do something for our dad. He's our dad. And he loves us. And we should give him that love back. Say, Lord, you put me on this horse for such a time of day, this very day and this very hour, for such a time as this, I will fulfill whatever you want me to fulfill. I will do what you ever want me to do. No matter who you want me to call, if you want me to call somebody today, if you want me to visit somebody today, if you want me to go into Walmart, if you want me to see somebody and lay hands on them, I'm going to go lay hands on them because you are the ones that are going to give them what they need to hear because it's your words and you love them. 
No fear. So let's pray over what's hap going to happen. And let's pray over the effects of all those states of all those people. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, first of all, Heavenly Father, we do lift up every person that was impacted by all that devastation of those tornadoes, Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Satan, we take you out of this situation with all those people that are grieving, with all those people who have lost loved ones, all those people who have lost homes, all those people who are just beside themselves, Father God, they don't know why this happened. They don't know what happened, Father God. We want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, that you show up in that, in that area. You show up, Father God. Touch them right now the way you've never touched me before. Have their, your glory fall down on them, Father God. Show them. Be in where they are at. No matter if they're in a hotel room, if they're in a friend's house, no matter where they, Father, where are staying. We thank you, Father God, for restoring unto them. For showing yourself who you really are, Father God. And we're commending that spirit of grief, of anguish, of despair. We bind you off of those people right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, in the midst of sorrow, you are turning their mourning into joy, Father God. However you have to do it, Father God, we know that you will do it. Send laborers into their path. Show them, Heavenly Father, show them how much you truly love them. And your adversary, Satan is the one who steals. He's the one who kills. And he's the one that destroys. And Father God, as you're moving across this land, and as you're moving across this world, and as more death comes, Father God, that your children right now, we're, come, we're right now, children of Almighty God, get up. Get up from where you are. Get up and remove those blinders off of your eyes. Get up and soften your hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Where there was despair, I will bring joy. For where there was defeat, I will bring a victory. For where there was stealing and debt and poverty, I will bring you blessings and overflow. For I am not done with the United States. And I am not done with my remnant. For what you will see in these next few days and the next few months, you watch out. You brace for my impact because I am about to do it twofold. I'm about to brace for your adversaries will know who I am. I will put my hand against them and judge them. And on the same side, I will bring blessings to my body and my church. For I am pouring out my spirit. And I am going to restore all that deserves and that all that the inheritance was my children. It has your names on it. So in the next few weeks, in the next few months, start claiming and decreeing your inheritance package from your father. You are part of the greatest family that ever existed on the face of this earth. The wealth that you have no idea how much is in this earth. There is gold where you don't even know there was gold. There is silver that people haven't found yet. There is diamonds and there is jewels that I will lead my children to. For in these days you will see magnificence. You will see splendor and glory reigning upon you. For you are my body and you are my church. And I have handpicked you for such a time as this. So rise up, get up, because your days are here. Your days of freedom, your days of restoration, your days of overflow, your days of wholeness and soundness are here today. So take it and receive it, my children, for my love I am pouring out in these days like never before, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we'll take up communion. So everybody who is watching, get some elements. You can, it doesn't matter if you don't have grape juice, if you don't have apple juice, just get water and a cracker. Get water and a piece of bread. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just, par, just partake it with us. And, and while, as we're partaking um, of communion, if you need healing in your body. Now, after I turn the live off, I'm going to pray for everybody here over on the live. But after I turn it off, then I will lay hands on anybody who needs hands laying on them. 
because I don't want people not to come up because the camera's on. So I'll make sure the camera's off before we pray for you. But we should be excited. If you're not excited, if you're not excited, get excited. You've been hand chosen. You've been hand chosen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, as we're passing this out, I just want to pray over each and every person that is watching. Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name, wherever, and no matter where they're watching from, Heavenly Father, no matter what anguish they're going through, no matter what the adversary has put them through, Heavenly Father, we are in a war. And the war is waging against your children. Heavenly Father, a lot of them have given up hope. A lot of them have been so overwhelmed with the spirit of heaviness. There's been a lot of sickness and disease caused by man. Heavenly Father, you know we have been poisoned in so many different ways. It says in your word, if we eat in a deadly thing or anything of deadly poison, it shall not harm us. So Heavenly Father, right now as I lift up every person that has an affliction, every person that has any pain, every person that's going through any type of thing in their body, I'm commanding their freedoms right now in the name of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Anything that's been proclaimed by a doctor, I thank you, Father God, that you are Jehovah Rapha, and anything that you say trumps anything the doctor says. So we thank you, Father God, for the doctor's report. We thank you, Father God, for doctors. But we thank you that your report is the final report, and we're proclaiming wholeness. We're proclaiming there's no feeble among them. We're proclaiming right now healing signs and wonders in their life today. Restore what has been stolen, Father God. Bring their children home. Bring their finances back to them. Bring their jobs, Father God. Bring back joy and peace whenever it's been stolen from them. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. What? Baby Joseph. Okay. Natalie, take this prayer for baby Joseph. Heavenly Father, right now we know this little baby, I think he's about three months old. Heavenly Father, he has been attacked by the devil. No matter where he's at, baby Joseph, I'm commanding life into your body. I'm commanding the oxygen to flow and the blood to flow and your, your lungs to open up. Father God, breathe the breath of life into him. And I'm commanding every abnormality and any malfunction that has been in that baby. I'm commanding that Turk or that curse to get off of him right now in Jesus' name. And I'm proclaiming and decreeing his freedom right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that he doesn't need any more of these tests. He won't need any more of these surgeries. I thank you, Father God, because you are touching baby Joseph right now where he's at. And everything that Satan has done is being reversed right now. You have made him whole. You have delivered him and his parents are going to see that the great I am, Jehovah Rapha, came into his bedroom and healed him. And we thank you, Father God, for it, that you get all the praise and you get all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Amen. Okay. So, Heavenly Father, as we lift up this bread to you, and first, if we have any odd against anyone, Heavenly Father, if we have any sin in our life, knowingly or unknowingly, that we have committed, Father God, that we have not repented of. We're standing before you. We're asking you, Father God, to forgive us. We're judging ourselves so we will not be judged. So any unforgiveness, any bitterness, Father God, any words that any of us have spoken that ushered in the spirit of fear, the spirit of death, any other demonic beings and foul, unclean spirits that have been allowed to be in our life because we gave it over to the power of words. We're asking those words to come down. We're asking for forgiveness. We're asking for a crop failure, Father God, of every sin, anything people watched. I'm hearing it right now. There's somebody online. You've been watching pornography. God's freeing you from that addiction. And you take it as you're taking this communion because I know you've been, you've been longing to be free from it. And any other person that has any other addiction that is watching this, whether it be alcohol, whether it be cigarettes, no matter what it is, no matter what that addiction is, it can even be um, 
well, it doesn't matter what it is. Any type of addiction that's been plaguing your mind and plaguing your body, when you partake of this, you proclaim your freedom, tear it down, and receive what the Lord has done. So, Heavenly Father, as we lift up this bread to you, we thank you, Father God, that you sent Jesus for us. He bore that curse on his body. He took the curse. He dissolved it for our sake. He destroyed. He disarmed our adversary. And we thank you, Father God, as we partake and we remembering of the sacrifice that Jesus has done for us. We receive the sacrifice. We receive. We're calling our bodies whole. Any abnormality, any malfunction, as we partake of this bread, we are healed by the blood of the Lamb and by our word of our testimony. So we thank you, Father God, as we break the bread and as we partake. We are whole, we are sound, and we are free this day. All partake. And Heavenly Father, as we drink of this cup and the blood that was shed for us on Calvary's tree, even the stripes on Jesus' back, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was sweating drops of blood because of the amount of pressure that he had on him. Father God, in any type of thing we have done, any sin that we've committed, but also Heavenly Father, any door we've opened, we know that Jesus' blood covers it all. Jesus' blood destroyed it all. Jesus' blood has disarmed our adversary and brought him to nothing. So we thank you, Father God, that you have washed us, you've purified us as white as snow. We thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins and then choosing to remember them no more. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. We thank you that you covered it all, you did it all for us, and we receive it by faith right now. I'll partake. I know people who are starting to, who are starting to do that every day, before dinner, before breakfast, or you know, before they do lunch. So at, right now, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Now, it says in God's Word, in Malachi chapter 3, you guys know my story. A long time ago, I couldn't afford to do it, I thought. And I was sitting in bed one day, and the Lord said, where will man rob God? And he kept saying, and he kept saying, and he kept saying it. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? And I looked it up, and he brought me to this passage. And then I got it. But then since then, when I started doing it, the Lord has blessed abundantly. Okay. So verse 8, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, Will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me, but you say, In what way do I rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and your offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income, into the storehouse. There may be food in my house. And prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. For you and poor house is blessed, and that you not, shall not have enough room to receive it. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer, insects, and plagues for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of our, your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before a time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, and the nations shall call you happy and blessed, says the Lord of hosts. Heavenly Father, right now we just lift up our tithes and offerings unto you. We want to thank you as a sweet-smelling Savior unto your nostrils. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father. We don't have to tithe. We get to tithe, and we get to have Jehovah Jireh as our provider. We want to thank you, Father God, right now. You've destroyed our adversary. We thank you that we have tithing rights, that we hold on to our tithing rights, that our adversary can, cannot come in. He cannot devour. He cannot bring lack. He cannot bring poverty. He cannot bring death. Because we thank you, Father God, that you have opened the windows of heaven. We thank you this day that we are living under the open uh, windows of open of heaven unto you. And Heavenly Father, we also thank you. Lay your hands on your, your tithes and your offerings, even you are home. And say, Father God, I thank you that you multiply the seeds we are sowing. We thank you, Father God, for the hundredfold return working on our behalf. We thank you, Father God, that you are. It's like the little boy of the loaves and the fishes when he gave it to Jesus. We thank you, Father God, you are the God of multiplication. So thank you for multiplying them. Thank you for overflow, Father God, and more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, as we're taking up the tithes and offerings, I just want to thank each and every person who has uh, come today and who has watched 
uh, online and then also here. Uh, God bless each and every one of you and have a wonderful day.